Uh, hello there everyone, uh, Louis here, uh, Regional Development Centre Assistant Manager and uh, Lead Goalkeeping Coach at Cambridge United uh, FC Youth Development. Um, really, really, really pleased to share the uh, following interview with you. Uh, this is with our first team goalkeeping coach, Mark Bunn. Um, obviously, fantastic career as a Premier League and EFL goalkeeper and obviously now a, uh, now a coach of us. So, uh, real, real interesting chat and um, some really good insight. Thank you for sending your questions. Very much appreciated. Uh, had a great read. Obviously, they couldn't all make the cut, but... Um, Think some some really good ones have done so really really appreciate that anyway without further ado i will hand you over to uh, well myself and uh, and mark and um, hope you enjoy the, the q a thank you okay i'm now joined by cambridge united fc first team goalkeeper coach mark bunn uh, thank you very much for joining us today mark really appreciate it no problem mate um hope you're well um it's good to be on in good to chat and looking forward to these questions great stuff great stuff yeah i had a few come in from uh, the boys and the girls as well to be fair as well so really good right. thoughts um so to start obviously you had a fantastic obviously playing career and um, you just give us a quick outline of that that'd be absolutely fantastic yeah so um playing wise i started my career at northampton um i started um well i must have got in the team probably when i was 22 23 uh, made over 100 appearances and then um got a big move to to Blackburn, where I stayed there for, for four years. Um, ended up going out on loan to, to Leicester, Sheffield United, um, and then moved to Norwich, and then finished my career at Aston Villa, where I spent three years. So, yeah, it was, it was a good career, but I wish I played more. Didn't really play that many games, but um, it's always nice to, to play in the Premier League, played in the Championship and League One, so, and now I coach in League Two, so played in uh, all the divisions. Oh, fantastic. And while you were playing, was sort of coaching something you were looking, looking to do or was it perhaps something you thought later on in your career or doing your badges or how did that really come about? Yeah, so I'm just doing my badges at the minute. Um, when I was at Aston Villa, I come in probably the last year at Aston Villa, kind of was, was doing a few sessions with the other 23s and just looking into doing some coaching stuff. And um, yeah, and then I kind of moved into that. I was, I was struggling with injuries back end of my career with my hips. So then I kind of come to a, to a decision where do I take another year and then I'll be in the same situation where I might struggle to get a, a club. But then I spoke to Colin and he said that I was looking for a goalkeeper coaching. I just thought it was a good opportunity to come in, get my foot in the door and um, to start my journey really. So that was the thought behind it. Oh, fantastic. So obviously you mentioned that sort of Colin, uh, Colin contacted you and was that sort of the moment you was sort of waiting for a little bit and thinking what a good opportunity? Yeah, well, um, I was with Colin at Northampton. He was my manager at Northampton. And then I went to Norwich and he was assistant manager there. And then when I was at Aston Villa, Colin came in to Aston Villa. So I've been everywhere with Colin, really. So when I spoke to him over the summer, told him my idea and what I was thinking, um, he said that Pilks would just move into Barnsley. So um kind of worked out perfect, really. So... Um, yeah, it's a great. It's been a great experience working. We've got three fantastic goalkeepers down here now. We've got Dimmy, uh, Callum, and Kai. They're, they're great, great goalkeepers. They work hard. They're dedicated, and this um, I really enjoy doing sessions with them every day. Oh, fantastic! It's brilliant. I think just really, I think really good to touch on how joined up it's all been. Really, in terms of obviously, I know last season, obviously the two scholars, Jonah and um, and Louis, have been obviously trained up with the first team occasion as well. And I think that really sort of emphasises how into progression we are and making sure that everyone has an opportunity. Obviously, with the COVID situation, it's really hard, isn't it? But I think that's fantastic and something you maybe don't find at many football clubs. Yeah, well, training training here at uh, Clare College, um, you've got the young lads training here as well. So it's always nice when you can get them involved with the first team. That's what I always kind of look to do, get them involved, um, get them involved in sessions. But at the minute this season, because of COVID, it's been hard to to get the lads involved. We don't really see them that much um, because we've got to be in at different times. So um, that, that's been disappointed this season. But last season, definitely, it was, it was good to get the, the two young lads involved uh, in around the first team. And it's this great experience. I think for a young lad, when you're training with first team goalkeepers, you can kind of look at their technique and what they kind of do in training and add that into your game. So I think it's perfect for the young keepers to work with the old ones. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. I think it was um, obviously being able to deserve a few sessions was brilliant and seeing that, which, which was great. Um, so here's a, here's a really, um, here's a great question. I thought this one. Um, can you describe your role with the team as a goalkeeping coach on a match day? What does that look like? I think great question. Matt. Yeah, great question. Um, match days. So if it's a three o'clock kickoff, 
Um, the lads usually get in for one fifteen, so um, coaching staff were always in early, doing our bits and pieces before. Um, so the lads will get in, um, they'll have their meeting at half one. The goalkeepers will go away, we'll look at the pen penalties from the game, for the game, um, start, kind of look at their team sheet, who will take the penalties, so we'll, we'll look at what kind of way they'll, they'll take the penalties, do some homework into that and take that into the game. Um, and then we'll, we'll go out for the warm up at two o'clock. Um, we'll do about 40 minutes warm up, and then um, Dimmy will come in. Whoever's starting, Dimmy or Cal will come in, and then the other goalkeeper will go in and do the, do the shooting at the end of the session. And that's, that's basically it, really, on the match day. Fantastic. And I believe I see you doing the subs sometimes as well in terms of the fourth official and that. I think a lot of people don't really know what goes on in the dugout there. Yeah, so I'm doing the subs at the minute. We had a bit of a laugh last season where um, we was making quite a few changes and uh, <laughs> got in a bit of a muddle. So <laughs> it was a nightmare last season. But yeah, it's, it's all right. It's just, um, yeah, so I, I do the subs on the bench, um, the subs as well, where uh, when Bond wants to make a change, I'll, I'll, um, I'll obviously write down the cards, who's coming on, who's coming off. And then if they're making the sub, kind of check over and see who's coming off. Um, and who's coming on. So, yeah, that's, that's basically it on a match day. And then hopefully we get the win and then we can all go home happy. <laughs> Ledger's great. There you go, everyone. You had it straight from, uh, straight from Mark Bond. Goalkeeper coach, the most important person on the match day. Do everything, literally. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, another, another interesting question for you. Uh, so what's your favourite game you've played in, uh, obviously as a player, and why would that be? Right. My favourite game would be uh, at Norwich again Spurs because that's my boyhood team all my family support Spurs uh, they're all big Spurs fans so uh, we played it was my debut for Norwich actually I think it was the cup in the cup and um, we're 1-0 up I think it is and then Spurs get a penalty at, right at the end and I managed to save it so um, it was great to, to experience that and it was nice at the end of the game because my dad and my brother were all Spurs fans, so they weren't talking to me at the end of the game anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I think I actually remember watching that game on telly. I actually remember that. That's brilliant. Yeah, so that, yeah, that was probably my highlight, really, just um, that game. And probably a couple where I started my career at Northampton, breaking through to the first team for the first time. Uh, we played Nottingham Forest at home. I think we lost 1-0, but... Just that feeling of walking out after all that hard work as a young lad, finally getting the opportunity to to play uh, for the first team, and that feeling where you get goosebumps walking out of the tunnel is um, a feeling that I'll never forget. So, yeah, so I'd say that's definitely up there as well. Oh, fantastic! Um, and obviously, you've been at Cambridge United for um, just over a season now, I think. Um, what's your best moment you've ever so far? I can I can think of one that I, I really enjoy. Uh, the one that sticks in my head at Cambridge probably when we played Brentford away um, it went to penalties and we managed to, to beat Brentford and I was down at the away and celebrating with the lads uh, that is probably a memory that sticks out but this season um, has been really good thoroughly enjoyed it it's always nice when the team's winning uh, we've gotten a good run of games at the minute um, a great winning mentality um, we've got a great set of lads as well and uh, everyone's working hard and pushing hard and with Bonds as well as the gaffer um, he's done really well and I'm so happy for him because he's deserved his chance oh fantastic nice no, brilliant obviously it's all, all really really good at the minute so long may that continue of course and uh, yeah. one I had in mind as well obviously Cal's debut in that so that was brilliant um, well here we go so I've got obviously we touched on the um, on your favourite game but um, your favourite ever save and then also the best save you've ever seen someone else make um, best save the one that sticks in my head for some reason I don't know why but was David Seaman's save against uh, Sheffield United where he's diving back towards the line and he's clawed it out against Sheffield United um, that, that's probably a save that sticks out in my mind as, as a really good save that I've seen but uh, my save um, there hasn't really been too many <laughs> <laughs> Um, been a few I, in training when you've had to jump in, I imagine. Been a couple. Well, you've not seen me train. <laughs> <laughs> um, saves wise, I'd say um, Northampton 
we played Scunthorpe away actually, and um, I just had one of them games where I just seemed to be saving everything. And um, I think you get them games as a goalkeeper where you just think, just shoot, I'm going to save it. And I was in that kind of frame of mind where I just thought I could save anything. So I'd say Scunthorpe away made about four or five good saves. So that game sticks out in my mind. And we just played them. So. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. I always love sort of seeing what, what different, obviously, players that have played at such a high level, what kind of saves that they like best and what maybe they value as highly. Because obviously, you, you know, sometimes you watch matches every day and I think obviously all the young keepers out there as well, some of the, the analysis isn't quite as detailed as perhaps what someone who's played in goal would give. So it's always really interesting to sort of see the, the technical aspects of what actual goalkeepers think is harder and goalkeeper coaches think is harder and that kind of thing, if that makes sense. So really interesting to hear. Um, so here we go. <laughs> what a great question. So what was it like at Norwich and then playing with players like Wes in the Premier League? <laughs> Got Wes. Yeah, well, yeah, you can see Wes is a fantastic player. Uh, you can see from this season what, what a great player he is for, for Cambridge as well, coming towards the end of his career. Um, so it's, it's so good to have him back um, on the same team as where we played at Norwich as well. And um, yeah, he's, we used to call him the, the Irish Wizard because he just used to take take players on, no one could get the ball off him. Um, he's such a talent and um, he's had a fantastic career, which he deserves and um, he's, he works so hard. Um, he, he puts it in in training, he's coming to the end of his career now, but he still turns up, does his work, fully committed and um, yeah, he's, he's been a great asset to the club. Would you say he's one of the best players you've played with or someone better stick in mind or? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd definitely say he's up there with um, one of the best players I've, I've trained with him. And um, I'd have to say definitely Jack Grealish when I was at Aston Villa. He was, um, he's a fantastic talent and um, he'll, have a, he'll have a great career. Oh, fantastic. No, that's, that's brilliant. Um, so we've sort of um, already touched on obviously someone in the Premier League, but just um, this question here is, What's it like being a Premier League goalkeeper and how does that differ to the playing in the EFL, if that makes sense? Is there a big difference? Is it in terms of preparation or was there anything that you'd say would come to mind? Yeah, um, I would say from playing League One at Northampton and then moving up the leagues to the Championship and Premier League, and you can kind of see the level that where it goes at it. The level just it increases so much and you've got to be aware all the time where you think maybe he's not going to get a shot off, but you've got these players just get shots off where you think they can't shoot from there. They won't get a shot off. You've got to stay focused every second of the game. You can't switch off. These are talented players that you're playing against when you're playing in the Premier League. And um, I thought that was probably the, the biggest test is just throughout the game, just staying, staying focused and uh, concentrated throughout, throughout the 90 minutes. You, one, one, if the ball comes off you, you know there's going to be a player in there that's going to finish it. You can't give them a second chance in the Premier League. And I just think even when you get the simple saves, you've got to make it clean, make it tidy. Um, there's no no room for error really up, up in the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, and we're really big on really after the game and analysing the game, uh, looking into what you did, what you did well, what you can improve on. And then we take that into training, really, and just try and to progress and um, to do better for the next game. So, yeah, I think um, the jump up from League One to the Premier League is is massive. Fascinating. Yeah, I think it's really interesting insight that just to hear the levels of, like you say, in terms of you can't afford to give players anything. I think that's fascinating. Because right, you're playing against talented players and um, you give them a, a chance of goal, they, they're going to punish you. And you can make 10, 10 good saves, but you make a mistake everyone will remember the mistake. So um, you can't give these guys guys a chance. No, so interesting. Um, I think that's absolutely brilliant. But uh, yeah, so in, in terms of that, I've got a few a few quick fire ones as well. Sort of a couple just about you personally, a couple about your career, if that's okay. It's just some quick fire ones. Um, so first of all, someone would like to know your favourite food. Favourite food would be, I like an Italian. So um, I, I just like a pasta dish or, or a nice Italian pizza. Lovely, good choice. Um, I know you've got a nice Mercedes at the moment. Uh, your favourite car? Um, I had a Range Rover once, I'd say Range Rover, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, favourite pet? Pet, well, well, we just bought a dog actually in lockdown, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'd have to say the dog. Yeah, can't say cat after that, really. 
I wings and poos everywhere, but yes, I'd say the dog. <laughs> uh, favorite color? Interested. Um, because I'm a, a Spurs fan, I'd say blue. Blue, good choice, good choice. Um, and in terms of in your in your career in the past, best dress play you've ever played with? Best dress. Um, I would say Alan Hutton at Aston Villa. Always come in smart. Always look good. Smell good. Yeah, Alan Hutton. Yeah. Proper. Would you have a worse dress as well, or would that be uh, would that be unfair? <laughs> to be fair, you always there's so many players that come in in trackies or whether they've just woke up and they're rushing to get in and they just put anything on. Um, who did we have that? Um, Playing wise, I've had quite a few that have been worse dressed, but I can't can't really remember. <laughs> I'd say Brad Guzan was was bad. Yeah. <laughs> American style clothes. On the subject of hair, uh, best hair slash worst hair. Best hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any player. Yeah, any player. Uh, I've got to say Jack Grealish. He's got a stylish, stylish cut. The kids love him. All the all the young players and kids love Jack Grealish. So I'd say probably Jack. I think it's something to do with the socks as well. I think the socks yeah, are. The socks. Everyone's doing the socks now. <laughs> it's a classic, isn't it? Um, just cut more here. I've got um, worst dancer. Worst dancer. Um, I would say Hanno here at Cambridge. He's um, he's got some bad moves. <laughs> Call it. We we'll have to get him on for an interview in a couple of weeks and uh, get him on. <laughs> Call it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I've got um, one, uh, a couple more here. I've got one more. So, who's your sort of the biggest joke you've played with or the most mental player? Obviously, goalkeepers have got their reputation, haven't we? But who would you say it would be? Uh, most mental, um, I would say. Do you remember Juf? Elas Juf? Yes. I would say when I was at Blackburn, I signed at Blackburn, and um, that he's crazy. He's probably the craziest <laughs> person I know, and I'd definitely say him, yeah. I turned up first day at Blackburn. And uh, I didn't know where to park, so um, I parked in his parking space. And then as I'm having breakfast, he's burst through saying, who's parked in my space? And then I've realised, and he's made me, dragged me to move my car out of his space. But, um, yeah, I'll probably say him. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. And the last quick part one I've got for you is um, boots of choice, which I think is a brilliant question. I love that. Boots of choice. Mm. Um, I've always worn... Throughout my career, I've always wore Nike and I stuck with Nike, so um, without a doubt it'd be Nike. Would you go for the gloves and a combination or you're not fussy? Yeah, always, always had to have the matching gloves with the, with the boots, so um, yeah, I, was, I always, always wore Nike. I went with a little spell of Adidas to try them out, but always seemed to come back with Nike and um, I stuck with them, so yeah, I'd, I'd have to go Nike all day with that. No, brilliant, brilliant. No, I really appreciate your answers and obviously great story there with the... Uh, with the, with the parking space. Um, last question I've got for you, and obviously really appreciate your time today, is um, your number one top tip for young goalkeepers looking to develop, either at the club or, or, or any goalkeeper anywhere? Yeah, number one top tip. Uh, for me, when I, was, when I was coming through as a young lad, I always turned up on time, always worked hard. I wanted to be the best trainer. If I was working in a group of, group of goalkeepers, I always wanted to be the best goalkeeper. I wanted to train harder. I wanted to to impress more and without a shadow of doubt, listen to the coach. Um, he's there to help you. Um, and, and don't be scared to make a mistake. When you go into games and you're, you're trying to, to do something positive in games, don't be scared to, to go out there and, and make a mistake. If you make a mistake being positive, then um, I don't think you should be blamed. I think you're, I think that that's the main, main areas I'd, I'd look at is just Enjoy it. Stay. Um, make sure you work hard, and um, yeah, and just enjoy the game. It's such a short career. That's what I've I've learned. It's such a short career. Um, you don't realise how quick it goes until until you're done, really. So um, enjoy every moment of it because it's um, it's a fantastic game. Fantastic. No, brilliant. What great, great advice everybody there, I think. Um, Mark, really, really appreciate your time. We'll let you get on with your day, but absolute legend for joining us. Thank you very much. No worries. Cheers, mate. Take Brilliant. care. Cheers. Bye. You too. All the best. Bye-bye.